The Rose Bowl is considered the most colorful of all bowl games, and every inch of space in the gigantic press box is occupied by newspaper, radio, and television men, plus an array of newsreel photographers. The game gets underway as Sam Brown kicks off to UCLA and gives it a good ride down deep into the end zone taken by Walt Kowalczyk. Comes out up to the 5, up to the 10-yard line, cuts over to the far sideline and is nailed on the 12-yard line. And on the first play from scrimmage comes the first break of the ball game. Morrill takes the snap from center, fades back to pass, throws one downfield intended for Kowalczyk, intercepted by Decker, and Decker is nailed from behind by Kowalczyk. So UCLA takes over on the Michigan State 16, first and 10. Sam Brown takes the snap from center, circles right end, cuts inside a nice block, and gets all the way down to the Michigan State 10-yard line, where it's second down and four. Fullback Bob Davenport on a drive play straight up the middle, picks up three more yards, and it's third down and one to go on the Michigan State 7. Sam Brown again takes a high snap from center, again circles right end, cuts inside, and is stopped short of the goal line. However, it's a first down and goal to go on the Michigan State 2. And Bob Davenport piles over into the end zone for the first score of the ball game, coming in three minutes and 12 seconds of the first quarter. And the UCLA fans grow, go wild here as UCLA scores, and it's now six to nothing over Michigan State. Sammy Brown will hold the ball, and Paul Decker will attempt the conversion. They line up, signals are being called, the ball is snapped on the tee, Decker kicks, and it's good, and UCLA leads Michigan State by a score of 7 to nothing. Brown again will kick off for the U-Clans, uses a 9-yard approach to the ball, gives it another good ride, carries way down to the 5-yard line, taken by Kowalczyk again. Coming up over the 15, up to the 20, gets to the 25, and is brought down hard on the 29-yard line of Michigan State. First down and 10, Morrill takes the snap, hands off to Planutis, and up through the center. Planutis picks up six yards on the play. It'll be second down and four. The ball on the 35-yard line. Michigan State in a T formation, now shifting right into a single wing. The ball this time goes to Peaks, a handoff to Kowalczyk on an inside reverse, and goes up to about the 40-yard line, and it's good for a first down. First and 10 on the 40. Again, a snap to Morrill, a handoff to Peaks on an inside reverse. He hits the middle for three more yards over his own right guard. It'll be second and seven on the 43. Unbalanced line to the right, another handoff to Kowalczyk this time, up through the center, finds a nice hole, gets into the secondary, and is brought down on the 43-yard line of UCLA, and it's another first down. Five-yard penalty for offside, puts the Spartans with first and five. A handoff to Clarence Peaks, and again, right up through the center. As Michigan State is driving, goes to the Cal UCLA 27-yard line. Morrill keeps the ball, fades back to pass, looking for a receiver, shoots one downfield, and it falls incomplete, intended for Walt Kowalczyk on the 10-yard line. Kowalczyk takes a direct snap, goes to the left side, at the short side of the line, and gets over the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. Now in an end-around play, here's a pitch out to John Lewis. Lewis fumbles the ball, falls on it, and recovers, and it's about a five-yard loss for Michigan State. So it's second and 15 on the 22. Morrill has the ball and a quarterback option play, runs into Masters, finally gets around him and goes down to almost the 17-yard line. Morrill again, handing off this time to Kowalczyk, trying the short side of the line, cuts its side but is nailed on the 15. It's fourth down and eight. Again, Morrill hands off to Clarence Peaks, fading back to pass, looking for a receiver, and he can't get it away as Hardeman Curitan and Sam Brown bring him down for a nine-yard loss, and UCLA takes over. Hand off to Decker on a reverse. He tries the middle over his own left guard and picks up three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Ball is snapped this time to Bradley in a tailback position. Circles the left end, gets up almost to the 30-yard line. Ball will be put in play on the 29. It'll be third down and five. Single wing back to the left for UCLA. The ball goes to Decker on a handoff. He goes wide to the right. Cuts inside a nice block, but Johnny Matsko, Michigan State's defensive back, nailed him. Fourth down and four, and UCLA goes into punt formation. Ronnie Knox gets his toe into the ball and kicks down to Jimmy Wolf on a 34-yard line, inadvertently steps out of bounds as, as he tried to fake left. Michigan State has first and 10 on the 34. Hand off to Jimmy Wolf, and Wolf dies up to the 37-yard line for a gain of three yards. 
The line is split, unbalanced to the right, T formation. Morrill has the ball, a handoff this time to Planutis. Planutis over his own right tackle. Picks up four more yards for Michigan State. It'll be third down and three in the 41. Again, Morrill with the ball, fading back to pass. Shoots one down the field, and it falls incomplete, intended for Dave Kaiser on the 50. So in punt formation with fourth and three, Morrill kicks the ball from his own 32-yard line. Sammy Brown waits for it, takes it in on the 14, comes up the field, gets over the 20, reverses, goes back to the 20 again, and is nailed down. And it was a 46-yard kick for Earl Morrill. First and 10 for UCLA on their own 20. A fake quick kick, and Peters goes up the middle for three yards. Second and seven on the 23 now. Brown is back in at the tailback position. Michigan State in a seven-man defensive line. The ball goes to Brown. He tries his own left tackle and picks up one yard. Third down and six on the 24. Brown drops back for a quick kick, and he gets the ball away. Goes all the way down where Clarence Peaks chases around the 32. It bounces back. It's picked up by Jimmy Wolf in the air. He goes for the far sideline and is met on the 36-yard line and brought down. So the Spartans take over, first and 10 on their own 36. Clarence Peaks on a handoff from Morrill. Hits the left side of the UCLA line and picks up one yard. Second down and nine, a wing tee to the right. Morrill with the ball, bootlegs, goes wide to the left, looking for a receiver, throws one down to Dave Kaiser, but it falls incomplete as it was batted down by UCLA's Bergdahl. It's third down and nine on the 37. Morrill has the ball. Back here's the controversial play. There's the fumble picked up by UCLA. Morrill attempting to pass was hit. The ball knocked out of his hands, and Duffy Doherty is wondering about the call of that last play. First and 10 for UCLA and the Michigan State 36. Sam Brown again goes wide to the right, gets around one tackler, misses the second tackler, and is brought down inside the 30-yard line, or 36. About the 29-yard line, it'll be put in play, and just as they line up, the quarter ends. So at the end of the first period, the score is UCLA 7, Michigan State nothing. Picking up play in the second period, it's Peters, the fullback, over his own right tackle for one yard. Third down and two yards to go on the Michigan State 28-yard line. Sam Brown again in the tailback. Goes off his own right tackle, gets inside the 25. And it'll be a first down. First down on the 25-yard line for the u -Clans. Davenport in at fullback. Tries his own left guard and gets in there for two more yards. So second down and eight now on the Michigan State 23. Again, Sam Brown in the tailback, takes a direct snap from center, may pass, decides to run instead, and Nystrom comes in there along with Masters to make the tackle. Picked up six yards on the play, it's now third and two in the 17. Davenport, the fullback, up through the middle, picks up one yard at left tackle. Fourth down and a yard to go in the Michigan State 16-yard line. And again, Bob Davenport on a straight buck up through the middle, gets the necessary yardage and makes it a first down on the Michigan State 14-yard line. First and ten. Again, the ball goes to Sammy Brown. A flag on the play. Comes wide to the right. Still looking for that hole, and he can't find it, and he's brought down from behind. Three Michigan State tacklers on him. Five-yard penalty against Michigan State for offside. Puts the ball on the Michigan State nine-yard line, and it's first and five now for UCLA. Bob Davenport again on a direct pass in the center, tries the center of the Michigan State line, picks up one yard, and will put the ball in play on the eight-yard line. UCLA has a second down and four in the Michigan State eight-yard line. From the single wing to the right, it's Sam Brown again, circling wide. He can't get through, and he's trapped for a four-yard loss. So it'll be now third down for the u on the nine-yard line, or nine to go, rather, on the 13-yard line. Again, Brown in the tailback position. Takes a snap from center, starts circling wide to the left, looking for a pass receiver. Finally, can't get one away, and he's thrown for a loss. Back to the Michigan State, 21-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and 17, and UCLA elects to attempt the field goal. Bradley holds, Decker tries the place kick, and it's wide and off to the right, and it's no good. And at that, the Michigan State crowd goes wild. The score is still 7 to nothing in favor of UCLA. Michigan State takes over, first and 10 on their own 20. It's Dennis Mendick now off his own right tackle and picks up five yards to the 25-yard line. Single wing, or a T formation rather, offside on the play, and there's Clarence Peaks up for two yards. However, Michigan State was penalized five yards. Actually, there was a back in motion. Puts the ball back on the 20-yard line. Second down and 10, wing T to the right. The ball goes to Morrill on a rollout. 
Comes wide to the left, looking for that receiver downfield, and he connects to Dennis Mendick, but Mendick was out of bounds when he caught the ball. So it'll be third down and 10, still on the 20-yard line. T formation, unbalanced line to the right. The backfield shifts into a single wing with Morrill going to the tailback. Drops back for a quick kick, and he gets the ball away. And he goes downfield to the 42-yard line, taken by Bradley. Bradley starts up the field, then reverses direction, picks up about three yards. However, on that particular play, UCLA was offside. Michigan State takes the penalty, and it'll now be third down and five to go on the Michigan State 25-yard line. So they line up in a wing tee to the right with Kowalczyk outside. A handoff from Morrill to Peaks. He goes wide to the right and is thrown out of bounds, but he picked up enough yardage, five yards, to make the necessary first down. First and ten now on the Michigan State 30. The ball is handed off to Jerry Planutis. He fumbles, turns around, and recovers his own fumble on the 30-yard line at the line of scrimmage, and there was no gain. So it's second and ten still on the 30. T formation. Morrow calling the signals, takes the snap again, fades back after a handoff, and then he hits Jimmy Hinesley, the right end, over the 40-yard line to about the 43, where Hinesley was brought down in his tracks. A 13-yard gain. First down and 10 on the 43-yard line. Again, a wing tee to the right with Kowalczyk outside the right end. Morrow with the ball on a rollout, comes wide to the left, throws down the field, intended for Clarence Peaks, and it's over his head that led him a little bit too far. Incompleted forward pass. Second and 10 on the 43. The line is set, the ball to Morrill, a handoff to Planutis, finds a nice hole up over his own left tackle and is brought down on the 50-yard line for a seven-yard gain. It's third down now and three yards to go for a first down on the midfield stripe. T formation. The line is split, power to the right. A handoff to Kowalczyk, a headlong dive right up through his own right tackle, and he makes a necessary three yards for another first down for Michigan State. The line is tight this time. Morrill on another handoff to Kowalczyk over his own left tackle, picks up a few blockers and goes downfield to inside the UCLA 20-yard line and is thrown out of bounds on the 17. The longest run of the day, Walt Kowalczyk, a 30-yard run. The UCLA coaches are a little unhappy at that last play. First and 10 now for the Spartans. From the wing tee again they operate. Benutis over his own right guard and picks up about four yards. It'll be second down and six on the UCLA 13-yard line. Unbalanced to the right is the line T formation. Morrill fakes two handoffs, goes back to pass, shoots one downfield, and completes it to Clarence Peaks for the first Michigan State touchdown of the afternoon. Tony Kologi comes over to congratulate Clarence Peaks on the reception. And the 4,000 Michigan State students go wild. Morrill holds the ball. Planutas attempts the point. He kicks it up in the air, and it's good. Through the middle, and the score is tied. Michigan State 7, UCLA 7. The touchdown coming in 9 minutes and 8 seconds of the second quarter. Johnny Matsko now will kick off for Michigan State. Lines up, nine-yard approach to the ball, puts his toe to it, and the ball carries down to about the 13-yard line, where it's picked up by Ronnie Knox. Comes up the field to the 20, heads for the center of the field, and is thrown down on the 25-yard line. So the U-Clans have the ball in their own territory on the 25, first and 10. Single wing to the left. Ball goes to Bob Davenport, up through the center, and he picks up four yards over his own left guard. It'll be second down and six on the 29. Again, the single wing is to the left. Again, the pass goes to Ronnie Knox. He's looking for a receiver, can't find one, decides to run, goes up through the middle, and is brought down on the UCLA 33. It'll be third down. It lacks two yards of being a first down. Single wing to the right. It's Davenport, the fullback, over his own right guard for the necessary yardage. He picks up three and a first down for UCLA. The ball will be put in play on the 36-yard line. Again, Ronnie Knox has the snap. He throws, and it is incomplete. Knocked down by Pat Burke. Michigan State withdrew a penalty of 15 yards for roughing the passer at that particular moment. Again, Knox draws back to pass, looks down the field, and he can't find the receiver that was open, and the pass was intended for Adams, but it fell incomplete. Be second down and 10 on the 49. This time Holloway reverses, takes the handoff, and goes wide to the left and gets into the Michigan State secondary and picks up 10 yards on the play. So that'll be another first down for UCLA down to the Michigan State 39-yard line. First and 10. This time it's Ronnie Knox again coming wide to the right, looking for that receiver, throws a jump pass down the field intended for Smith, but it falls over his head and incomplete. Clarence Peaks and Walt Kowalczyk were on him on that uh, pass pattern. 
Again, Ronnie Knox fades back to pass, looking for the receiver. It's intercepted by Dan Curry. He laterals off to Jimmy Wolf, and then there's a wave of three Michigan State blockers as Wolf comes up over the midfield stripe and is thrown down on the UCLA 43-yard line. So Michigan State takes over in the latter moments of the second quarter. Wing T to the right for the Spartans. Morrow with the ball, slips, falls, picks it up. Can't get away from his tackler, and then is thrown for a two-yard loss. So it'll be second down and 12 on the 45-yard line as the Spartans line up again. Morrill has the ball on a rollout, fades back to pass. Looking for that receiver, shoots a long, wobbly pass down the field, and Ronnie Knox leaps high in the air, makes the interception, and brings the ball back to the 18-yard line of UCLA, and the U-Clans take over. Peters in at fullback once again, tries a dive play up through the center and picks up four yards before he stopped. The ball will be put in play on the 22-yard line. It's second down and six. Knox in the tailback position on the single wing, drops back on a fake quick kick. He decides to pass, throws one down the field, and it's almost intercepted by Johnny Matsko. Ruled an incompleted forward pass, third and six on the 22. And right here, UCLA takes a little bit too much time. More than the allotted 25 seconds to get the play in motion, they're penalized five yards back to the 17-yard line. Third down and 11. Knox drops back for a quick kick. He gets the ball away. It's going downfield, rolling beyond Clarence Peaks. He makes a try for the ball, touches it, goes after it, makes a dive on it, and right here, Michigan State was detected clipping, and they will draw a major penalty, which will put the, play, put the ball in play back on their own one-yard line. So it's first and 10 for Michigan State, a 15-yard penalty for clipping. The ball deep in their own territory. Unbalanced line to the right, Morrill at quarterback, tries to sneak up through the center, and he picks up three yards right through the middle of the UCLA line. Makes it second and seven on the four-yard line. Again, a quarterback sneak by Earl Morrill, and he makes three more yards. However, Michigan State was detected offside, and the ball goes back to the one. Second quarter is just about over. Time for one more play. Morrill on a quarterback sneak again, goes right through the center, picks up eight yards as the first half ends and is history. And the score at the end of the first half is all tied up Michigan State 7 and UCLA 7. One of the outstanding features of this Rose Bowl tournament was the Euclorama provided by the card section of UCLA. The Michigan State Band forms a figurehead of Paul Whiteman as they tell the story of the American Dance Band. Now, the Euclorama is made up of 3,330 students comprising two complete sections over on the far side of the field. And all during the intermission, they put on tremendous displays with their flash cards. Now, Michigan State's band, under the direction of Leonard Falcone, directs the band in the playing of Summertime. There's a salute to the Western Conference and the Pacific Coast Conference. This series has been going since 1947. The Spartans and the Bruins. Again, the Michigan State Band as they perform in the card section, salutes Red Sanders and Duffy Doherty. Also a salute to the March of Dimes and also Care. Forming MSU for Michigan State University, the band plays the alma mater and the Michigan State fight song. In the meantime, spelling out in block letters, the card section with UCLA. One of the unusual features of the card section was the actual script writing of Michigan State. Crossing the T's was the final operation, all in green and white. The Honorable Charles Wilson, Secretary of Defense, was the Grand Marshal of the Tournament of Roses, and the card section salutes them. Now with the Olympic rings, actually 50 cents out of each $6 ticket at the Rose Bowl went toward the Olympic Fund and here is Governor Williams of the state of Michigan taking pictures of Bing Crosby as he comes into the game at halftime. During the halftime intermission, the lights were turned down around the sun set in the west and uh, cast a shadow across the gridiron. Once again, the card section spelling UCLA out in script with the school colors, the blue background, and the gold. In the meantime, the band forms a USA as the theme of the UCLA band was the wide, wide world in sight and sound. And as they were forming that, 
from around the outside of the UCLA as the band was playing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. The second half is just about to get underway as the Spartans take the field. Score, of course, 7-7 seven to seven at halftime. Michigan State will kick off with Johnny Matsko doing the booting. The third quarter gets underway, and Matsko gives the ball a good ride down to Sammy Brown on the goal line of UCLA. Comes up five, over the 10, the 15, cuts to the far sideline, gets over the 20, and is tackled hard and viciously on the 28-yard line. UCLA with the ball, first and 10. Sammy Brown, the tailback, and the single wing to the left, goes off his own left tackle over the top into the Michigan State secondary, and he picks up about nine yards on the play. It'll be second down and one on the 37-yard line of the U clans. The single wing is to the right this time. Again, Brown on the tailback, takes the snap from center, starts wide to the right, cuts inside the block and is met and gained about two yards on the play. However, it was enough for a first down on the 39-yard line for the U clans. Hand off to Decker this time as he's hit, he fumbles, but recovered his own fumble back on the 35. Second down and 14. Again, the ball is snapped to Brown. He goes off and fades back to pass, throws one down the field, and it's almost intercepted by Walt Kowalczyk. Throws the ball down in disgust. Third down and still 14 on the 35. Again, Sammy Brown takes a high pass from center, comes wide to the left, almost decides to pass, and then at the last minute decides to run the ball, is brought down from behind by Earl Morrill, the Spartan quarterback. Fourth down and 11, and Brown goes back into punt formation on his own 27-yard line. He gets the ball away, it goes downfield to Kowalczyk, picks it up, and as he's hit, he's fumbled. Looks like UCLA is going to recover, but Clarence Peaks dives underneath the pile and makes the recovery for Michigan State. The ball will be put in play on the 20-yard line of the Spartans. First down and 10, unbalanced line to the right, and the line is split. T formation, the ball to Morrill. A handoff this time to Planutis, right straight up through the middle for a gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six on the 24-yard line. Morrill on a quarterback option. He keeps the ball, goes off his own right tackle on a slant play, and gets up to the 29 of Michigan State. <clears throat> and it's third down, and it lacks a yard of being a first down. Hand off to Clarence Peaks, the bread and butter boy, and Peaks right up through the middle, gets over the 40 to the 42-yard line, and another first down for Michigan State. Again, a handoff to Planutis. Planutis tries the center of the UCLA line and picks up four more yards, making it second and six on the 46-yard line. Unbalanced line to the right once again, a handoff to Kowalczyk on the belly series, and Kowalczyk picks up one yard over his own left guard. The ball will be put in play on the 47, third down and five. Again, a handoff to Kowalczyk on the same play, and he's over the 50-yard line in the UCLA territory on the 49. And it lacks about one yard of being a first down. Fourth down and one, and a quarterback sneak by Earl Morrill gets the necessary yardage on the gamble, and Michigan State has the ball with a first and 10 on the UCLA 48-yard line. We're in the third period. The score is still 7-7. Seven to seven. After the measurement, it is a first down. T formation. Six-man defensive line for UCLA. The ball to Morrill, a fade back to pass. He throws one down the field, and it was intended for Kaiser, but knocked down by Palmer of UCLA. Second and ten. Peaks with the ball on an inside handoff. There's a flag on the play, and Peaks is stopped. Michigan State was detected holding on the play and drew a 15-yard penalty, which will put the ball in play on the Michigan State 37-yard line, second down and 25. Now the backfield shifts into a single wing with Morrill at the tailback position, drops back in the quick kick, but fakes it, and also fakes the photographer out of position as Kowalczyk is nailed out of bounds. In the meantime, the pass comes over to the near sideline to Clarence Peaks, and Peaks was nailed for a two-yard gain. So it's third down and 23. Michigan State uh, shifts into a single wing to the right. The ball goes this time to Kowalczyk. He's going to pass, the first pass he's ever thrown in his collegiate career, and he throws one, and he hits Clarence Peaks, on the 38-yard line. And that causes a little consternation on the UCLA bench. Ball handed off to Clarence Peaks again, up over his own right tackle, and gets down to the UCLA 33, where it's a first down and 10, an eight-yard gain for Peaks. Morrill with the ball, on a pitch out to Kowalczyk, on a swing wide to the left, gets a nice block from Peaks, Keeps on going and is thrown out of bounds on a 33-yard line of UCLA, a seven-yard gain, about the 26-yard line. Kowalczyk picks up three more over his own right guard and Michigan State fans now calling for the Spartans to move. Again, Kowalczyk goes way down the field, picks up 14 yards, 
down to the UCLA nine-yard line, where it's first and goal to go on the nine. Unbalanced line to the right, the handoff is to Clarence Peaks, tries his own right tackle and gets down inside the five-yard line to the three. Michigan State has the ball on the UCLA three-yard line, second down and goal to go. Morrill hands off to Kowalczyk, or a pitch out rather, and Kowalczyk is nailed as UCLA diagnosed the play perfectly for a five-yard loss. He was trapped by Ballard. Third down and goal to go on the eight-yard line. UCLA in a six-man defensive line. Morrow with the ball, fades back to pass, shoots for Kowalczyk in the end zone, but the pass led him by about three feet, and it falls incomplete. Fourth down, now goal to go in the eight. And so Michigan State elects to attempt a field goal. Morrow holding, Planutis kicking. The ball is in the air, and it sails wide to the right, and it's no good. So the score remains UCLA 7, Michigan State 7, as the third quarter is drawing to a close. The Bruins take over the ball on their own 20-yard line with first down and 10 coming up. They have the single wing back to the right. In the tailback position is Sammy Brown. The ball is snapped to Brown. He circles wide to the right again. Three men in front of him on the block. Gets up over the 30-yard line and is thrown down on the 31. First down and 10 on the UCLA 31-yard line. However, UCLA in the next play jumped the gun, their left tackle, and were offside. So the ball moves back to the 26 where it's first and 15. The single wing is to the left this time, and again it's Brown. Fading back, May pass, decides to run, cuts inside some beautiful blocks, gets up into the secondary over the 40, he fumbles, but it's recovered by Peters on the 47-yard line for a 21-yard gain by UCLA. So the Bruins have a first and 10 on the 47. The ball goes to Peters, who's in at fullback, finds a nice hole through the Michigan State line and gets down deep into Michigan State territory to the 42-yard line, where it's another first down and 11-yard gain on that play. First and 10 on the 42. Again, the single wing is to the right. UCLA operating from a balanced line. It's Brown again, cutting inside a nice block, and however, he's brought down from behind by Michigan State. Three-yard gain. This time it's Peters on a handoff up through the middle, and he makes no yardage at all. So it'll be third down and seven, still on the 39-yard line of the Spartans. Brown, the ball carrier, fades back to pass. He spies Bergdahl down the field, throws a jump pass, and it's over the top of Bergdahl's head, and it falls incomplete around the 22-yard line. So fourth down and seven, and UCLA decides to kick. The ball goes back to Brown, and he gets the kick away, angling for the sidelines, but he couldn't quite get the angle he desired, and the ball falls into the end zone for an automatic touchback as Clarence Peaks lets it roll dead. About time for one more play in the third quarter. The ball is handed to Kowalczyk. He tries his own left guard and picks up two yards as the third quarter ends. And the score, Michigan State 7, UCLA 7. The Spartans have 13 first downs to 10 for UCLA. First play of the fourth period, second down and eight on the 22 of Michigan State. The ball is handed off to Planutas. He finds a good hole, breaks through with hard running, and he gets up to the 33-yard line where he gains 11 yards on that dive play, makes it first and 10 on the Michigan State 33. The second play of the fourth period coming up, a wing T to the right, unbalanced line to the right. Morrill sets the line, calls the signals, takes a snap, pitches out to Clarence Peaks, looks downfield, spies John Lewis. He has it. Lewis has it on the 40, being chased by Sammy Brown. Brown makes a diving tackle. Lewis outsteps him and goes into the end zone for the second Michigan State touchdown of the day. And Brown was knocked out on that particular play, and he did not return to the ball game. So the score now, Michigan State 13, UCLA 7, and the Spartans will attempt the extra point. Again, Morrill will hold the ball, and Jerry Planutis, the fullback, will attempt his second conversion. Calling signals, the line is set. Ball is snapped to Morrill on the tee. Planutis boots, and it's through the middle. It's good. And Michigan State now leads by seven points over the U-Clans, 14 to 7. And that score came in 49 seconds of the fourth period. Johnny Matsko will kick off for Michigan State. Use that nine-yard approach to the ball. Puts his right foot to it, and down it goes. Right down into the end zone, taken by Decker. Comes out to the 5, the 10, gets up to the 15, right to the center of the field, and he's met and brought down on the UCLA 18-yard line, where the Bruins have it first and 10. Davenport back in at fullback, up through the center again. And he gains 5 yards on the dive play. Second down and 5 on the 23. Ronnie Knox back in at tailback for UCLA. The ball goes to Knox. 
He comes off his own right tackle, and he's, he's met at about the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up about three yards on his last drive to the 26-yard line, and it's third and two. Davenport on a dive play up through the center gets the necessary yardage, two yards for the first down, and UCLA has it first and ten on their own 28-yard line. UCLA lines up the wing... Uh, Single wing to the right. Ronnie Knox takes a snap and a jump pass, and he hits Rami Loud, completes it, and carries the ball down about 14 yards to the UCLA 42-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 on the 42. Single wing again to the right. Decker, the wing back, takes a handoff, cuts wide to the left, gets nice blocking, but Michigan State breaks through, breaks through the blocking wave, and nails Decker on about the 45-yard line, a three-yard gain. Second down and seven on the 45. Michigan State now up in an eight-man defensive line. Again, it's Ronnie Knox taking the snap, fading back to pass, looking for that receiver, can't spot one, so he has to run the ball. He's brought down by Dale Holleran, number 60 of Michigan State, and Tony Kaloji, number 93. So it's third down and nine once again. Ball is snapped this time. To Knox, he fades back to pass. Again, he looks for the receiver downfield. It's Herman down there, but the ball is over his head and it falls incomplete. Covered nicely by Pat Wilson, number 24. Fourth down and nine, and UCLA goes into punt formation. The ball on the 43-yard line. Knox has the ball, puts a toe to it, sends it down to the Michigan State 22. Jimmy Wolf has the ball, comes up to about the 28-yard line, and he's knocked down. A 36-yard kick for Ronnie Knox. First and 10 for Michigan State on their own 26, and Gary Lowe is now in at fullback. Takes a handoff from Morrill, tries his own right guard, picks up about four yards on the play to the Michigan State 30, where it's second down and six. Unbalanced line to the right. Morrill again on a quarterback option play. Can't get rid of the ball, nor can he run, and he's thrown for a loss on the play of about three yards, putting the ball back on the 27-yard line. Third down and nine. Again, Morrill from the tee, bootlegs the ball, goes wide to the right, throws one downfield, intended for Tony Kaloji, and it just off his fingertips and falls incomplete. So it's fourth down and nine, and Michigan State has to punt. Morrill back on about his own 18-yard line, gets the kick away, and it goes down toward Decker. Decker picks it up on the 40, circles back, misses one tackler, but Clarence Peaks, nice through to get Decker on the 45-yard line, just shy of the 45. First and 10 for UCLA. Single wing back to the left this time for the Bruins. Again, the ball is snapped to Ronnie Knox. He tries the left end, gets a nice wave of blockers. However, Jimmy Hinesley comes in to throw him out of bounds. Gained about two yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight. Ball is snapped to Knox again, fading back to pass. Looking downfield, he spies Decker, and Decker takes it over his shoulder. Kowalczyk chases him and brings him down on the eight-yard line. About the seven-yard line, and Walt Kowalczyk was hurt on that last play and had to leave the ball game temporarily. So it's first and goal to go on the Michigan State seven-yard line, and Duffy Doherty and Bob Devaney are just a little bit worried right now. Score is 14-7 to seven in favor of Michigan State at this point. Pat Burke comes into the Michigan State line. Ball is snapped to Ronnie Knox, and watch him bull his way all the way down to the two-yard line, taking four Michigan State tacklers with him. So now it's second down, goal to go on the Spartan two-yard line. Michigan State has their back to the wall. Again, UCLA decides to let Ronnie Knox try it. He tries to slant off his own right tackle and falls just a yard short of the goal line, where it's third down now for the Bruins, goal to go on the one-yard line. Peters is in at fullback now in the backfield. The single wing is to the right on a balanced line. The ball is directly to Peters and up and over and into the end zone for a touchdown. And the score is now Michigan State 14, UCLA 13. And the UCLA students and fans really go wild on that touchdown with the U-Clans now having an opportunity to tie this ball game up late in the fourth period. The score came with eight minutes and 53 seconds gone by in the fourth quarter. The Bruin Bear looking very happy. Knox will hold the ball. Decker will attempt the extra point. Ball is snapped at the discretion of the center. Placed on the tee, Decker puts his toe to it, and it's through the middle, and the ball game is tied up now 
with UCLA 14, Michigan State 14, and the Spartans lead in first downs by 1, 14 to 13. Now here comes an onside kick by Decker. The ball goes down toward the sideline and angles and will go out of bounds. And John Lewis was taken out on that last play. However, UCLA was offside on the kickoff, and they'll kick off now from the 35-yard line. This time, Peters kicks off, and the ball goes down to the 5-yard line, where it's taken by Clarence Peaks up over the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, right up through the center, and he's brought down on about the 25-yard line. However, Michigan State was penalized on that play for holding 15 yards. Planutis up through the middle, picks up three yards over his own left guard, and it's now second down and seven on the Michigan State 20. Michigan State breaks the huddle and goes into a wing tee to the right. Now they shift into a single wing. The ball goes to Planutis, a straight dive play up the middle off a fake quick kick, and he picks up 14 yards on the effort and gives Michigan State a first down on their own 34-yard line. First and 10 to go. Again, the power to the right side of the center and a T formation in the backfield. Earl Morrill with the ball on a quarterback sneak up through the middle, and he picks up seven more yards. Lacks three yards of being a first down on the Spartan 41-yard line. We're in the latter minutes now of the fourth and final period of this Rose Bowl game for 1956. Ball goes to Panutis, a handoff this time to Clarence Peaks. He gets through into the secondary and driving hard goes all the way up to the UCLA 47-yard line. Dave Kaiser, the right end is split. Quarterback sneak by Morrow picks up five more yards after the first down. It's now second and five. Down on the 42 of UCLA. Now the Bruins come up into a six-man defensive line. Hand off this time from Planutis to Peaks again. He's over his own right tackle and picks up nine more yards. That's good for another first down. The Michigan State band signaling they want Michigan State Spartans out there to go down toward that UCLA goal line. Ball this time goes to Planutis on a straight dive up through the middle again, gets into the secondary once more and gets down to the 23-yard line of UCLA. Jerry Planutis picked up 10 yards on that last play. Again, operating from the T formation, Morrill takes the ball, hands off to Planutis, but he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Picked up one yard, actually, or, at, or lost one yard, rather. So the ball's back on the 24-yard line where it's second and 11. A pitch out now from Morrill to Peaks, looking for that receiver. He sees Lewis in the end zone, but the pass is batted down at the last minute by Decker. And it falls incomplete. So it's now third down and 11 yards to go for a first down on the UCLA 24. Morrill with the ball on a bootleg. Comes around, looks for the receiver downfield, but the pass was deflected just as it left his hands by Hardeman Curitan, the All-American from UCLA. Fourth down and 11, and the Spartans attempt a field goal. Morrow holding the ball, Jerry Planutis will attempt the field goal, gets his toe to it, and the ball is short and lands in the end zone short of the goal post. So UCLA will take over with a first down situation, 10 to go on their own 20-yard line. However... They were penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct and it put the ball back on the five. First and 25 on the five. The ball goes to Ronnie Knox. He's back in the end zone. He's being chased. Can't find a receiver. He throws one finally and it's to an ineligible receiver downfield. And the UCLA Bruins were penalized once more. And it goes back to the one yard line. Now we're at second and 29. Another one of the controversial plays in the ball game in the last few minutes. Knox decides to punt, gets the ball away, but it's a poor kick. It goes down to the UCLA 40-yard line. And right there, there was interference called with the punt receiver, Clarence Peaks. And again, UCLA drew a major penalty of 15 yards for interference with a punt receiver. The ball went in play then with a first and 10 for Michigan State on the UCLA 19-yard line. As 15 yards are marked off against the Bruins. Dennis Mendick is now in at left halfback for the Spartans. The ball goes to Morrill, a handoff to Mendick. He cuts inside the right end. He fumbles the ball, but it's recovered by Jerry Planutis. However, Michigan State was detected holding on offense and drew a 15-yard penalty, putting the ball back to the 30. Don Zisk makes one yard over his own left tackle. He's brought down on the 29-yard line where it's second down and 20 now. About a minute to go in this ball game. Morrill has the ball, fades back to pass, spots Zisk, he hits him, connects with him, and Zisk falls down on about the 19-yard line of UCLA. 
Now it's third down, just seven seconds, and Dave Kaiser boots one from the 31-yard line, a 41-yard field goal, and the Spartans go into a three-point lead with seven seconds to go in this ball game, 17 to 14. The Michigan State team has Kaiser on the ground as they are really jubilant at, uh, at this time. With seven seconds to go, there wasn't too much that UCLA could do. The Spartans will kick off, and just about time for that play only. However, before the kickoff got underway, the goalpost came down on the north end of the field. The Spartans try an onside kick, and they fall on the ball, getting possession on the last play of the ball game as the clock expires, and the game is over. And everybody rushes out on the field to congratulate the Michigan State Spartans, who have won their second Rose Bowl game in three years, both over UCLA and the final score in the 1956 bowl game, Michigan State 17, UCLA 14. <laughs>